Well, hello there. Hope everyone is doing amazingly. Question, do you like to dance? Do you like to party? Do you like to have a good time? Do you like music? I can't imagine anyone saying no to that. Uh, we are gay people. We like our parties and we are known for our parties. Uh, well, you're in for a treat and you're in luck because this episode is all about parties in our LGBTQ community. Of course, there's no way we can cover all the parties happening out there. So we chose a cross section of them and uh, some of our party promoters to show you what's happening on the scene. My main guests on the episode are the Mojo Peeps. They are leaders in the field. They have a number of parties happening and we're gonna chat with them and see what's all about. My guest first on the couch is Joey Viola. Hello, Joey. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm really good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, you are part of a couple. Uh, yeah. Your other half is Monty Tierra, yeah. and together you're Mojo. Yes. Which only a few weeks ago I had this light bulb <laughs> that got me to know what, what that meant. What does that mean? Well, it stands for Monty and Joey. <laughs> yeah, it's I just, just figured this out. It's a fun play on words. I love when people finally clue into that. <laughs> Figure it out. Yeah, it happens all the time. People <laughs> are like, oh my god, I didn't even realize. <laughs> Uh, so when, when did you guys decide to start and why did you decide? Why, um, why Mojo? In November it'll be six years. Six years? Yeah, six years that we've been doing it. Thank awesome. you. Um, we decided to do it, um, we've been together for almost nine years. Okay. So the first three years, I mean, we we're getting to know each other. We'd go out to parties all the time and Monty ended up um, hosting some of the parties in the village. Okay. So we decided, I mean, we could do this. And we thought about it and we we're like, well, let's just merge together and actually create something. And okay. that's how it all kind of started great great reason yeah and you're loving it yeah yeah good it's a lot of work but uh, <laughs> i can imagine uh you have a couple of parties that i know of fml yeah uh, back to church we're going to be uh, looking at those uh, parties throughout this episode yeah you have other parties too tell us about those um we do a uh, rupaul drag race viewing party oh um, we we had a party called Sultry Saturdays, which yeah. um, it was at Byzantium. Byzantium. Yeah, so that's closed right now, which we let the party finish there. Okay. We're working on a few new things to bring up in the coming okay. season. You can't hush. tell us anything about I can't about talk yet. about it right now, but stay tuned. Ah, <laughs> look at him teasing us. Uh, so tell me, what do you think the difference between parties in the 1900s, 2000s, and now? What, what, what has progressed? It's a very interesting question, but I think that, um, especially in North America and Western world, especially, um, it's more freeing and you can, you can have gay parties, LGBT parties. Um, it's more acceptable. It's more acceptable. Okay. I'm sure in the 1900s, was a little bit closer. It was yeah. probably all underground yeah, type of stuff. Yeah, so now true. you can advertise freely, right? Oh. And I think so that's probably the main difference. That's a, that's a great place to be. Um, so Joey, uh, I'm going to be asking this question from all my main guests. Uh, why are party spaces important to our LGBT community and why do we need to come out and support them and keep them alive? Um, I think the main reason is for a safe space. I think it's really important for people to be able to come out and just feel comfortable and safe where they are. There's a lot of places you go and maybe you don't feel comfortable, you feel eyes on your shoulders yeah. because you're out with your boyfriend or your girlfriend and, or even for trans people. It's our own space. It's a we're, safe we're with space. Our, with our own people. That's I think Absolutely. the most important thing. Beautiful. All right, everyone, we're going to take a little break and we will be back. So stick around. Hi, Kat Grant here. I'm here with DJ Dallas my friend and DJ extraordinaire. I've been to many of her dances and many of the clubs she's worked at. Welcome Dallas. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah. Can you tell everyone how you started and how you became a DJ? Uh, in a nutshell, I was plucked from the dance floor at Chamois Discotheque and Tavern back in 1987, asked to play music in the dungeon, the holding tank for the lineups, and uh, on night number two of my experience, uh, the DJ upstairs fell out of the dance floor, broke her shoulder. They said, we need you upstairs now. And I went upstairs and faced the music, literally, and have been playing it ever since. So, yeah. Lucky how. for us. Yay. Not so lucky for her. <laughs> Poor girl. Sorry. <laughs> um, you played many places in Toronto. Can yeah. you just give us a list of some of the places you been well, out. the Chamois, the Rose Cafe, um, Deco's. I even played Tracks, uh, uh, one of the men's bars. It was a lot of fun, and and various other bars. Yeah. 
Uh, Dallas does a lot of events now for different occasions. Would you tell us now why you think that's important and how you got started? It's important because uh, the demographic, which is, is vast, we were missing, or me personally actually, I was missing a place to go party and see all my friends. And I said, we need a dance party and I'm gonna bring it. I need to bring these, these women back together again. We need to dance, we need to have some fun. Yeah. And you started that by first being called back for a Shane Wall reunion and then for Sharon Flanagan's reunion. Yes, I got invited to go with Ralph Hamelman. He invited me to do a Shane Wall reunion, which was packed and realized a huge need because I hadn't seen hundreds of these women and they hadn't seen each other since the early 90s. So watching them connect and reconnect and then make new connections, it was wow, it should have actually been called a connection because it just became about connecting. And I said, we need to do this again and again. Yeah, and then we just, and then it took off and all these years later, still doing it, yeah, everywhere. As many places as possible, if there's people who wanna dance, I'll come and we'll dance. Speaking of people who wanna dance, um, we don't have the clubs that we used to anymore and so we have event promoters like yourself. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to take your party outside of the venue of Toronto and the outlying regions? Would you go further in Ontario and take your party there? Oh, absolutely. I've been playing a lot of the pride venues uh, through over throughout Ontario. I would go. I would go if they could find a venue and uh, we can advertise and pack that place. I'll bring the party to your town. <laughs> so call me. We'll come. Absolutely. I'll join the train. <laughs> also, don't forget, Dallas has a great event coming up next summer for Pride. We'll be on the boat cruise. We're doing two boat cruises next summer. They are always the, the best party of the summer, for sure. They sure are. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Always a pleasure. Yeah, great. We'll be right back. are back and we are with Barbie Joe, a host and performer at FML. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, darling. I'm great. How and when did FML start? So I'm not really sure about the exact details of how FML started, okay. but I am aware that it started five years ago and we're about, we're coming up on our six year anniversary, which is really exciting. Wow, congratulations. I've been working with Mojo Toronto and FML Mondays almost since the beginning of its inception. It's a long time party. Yeah, six it years. is. And it's a very successful party for a reason. Awesome. So well, I'm having a really good time with it. That's my next question. What are you trying to do this party and what makes it uh, special or different? Why, why is it successful? So Monday nights at FML are, are really important to the community because it gives people a safe, drama-free space to come out, have a good time, have a couple drinks, have a laugh, and see some awesome, noteworthy performances. Because a lot of venues and a lot of parties are looking to put a lot of numbers on stage, and we ask that our drag queens and our performers put one or two numbers on stage so that they can focus on the artistry behind Beautiful. their work. Nice, nice. Who is the DJ? And what kind of music, vibe, and people should we expect at FML? So we have three DJs on rotation. All right. We have DJ Craig Dominic, we have DJ Reckless, and DJ Summation. They're all fabulous. They have different styles of music, of course. Okay. We have a so the vibe changes depending the on the DJ. The vibe can change, yeah, okay. uh, but it's 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 in line with the fact that we have a lot of people come to the party from a differing backgrounds and different age ranges. Okay. So it's not just a party for young people. It's not just a party for old people. <laughs> okay. It's a party for everybody. Everyone. Cool. Gay, straight, bi, trans, oh, nice. queer, you name so it's it, mixed. you're welcome. It's mixed. And okay. we love to have people there. We yeah. love it. Um, you have performances at the party? We do. We okay. have uh, we have two drag queens uh, at least per uh, per party. Okay. I know for our Halloween spectacular, we have three drag queens. So nice. sometimes we have special events that we like to highlight with a number of people. My favorite performers, of course, are my Mojo sisters. So girls like Juice Box and Helena Poison and right. Scarlet Bobo and all those girls. So Sweet. we have a good time. We have a good laugh. Sweet. 
Uh, when uh, does it happen? Mondays. <laughs> yeah, okay, so easy. it's called... But how, how do we connect with the party? Um, so to be able to connect with the party, you would go uh, onto our Twitter, our Facebook, or our Instagram, at Mojo Toronto. Okay. Um, that's the title for all three. And we are always at Flash at 11 o'clock on Monday nights, bright and early. There you go. Come <laughs> out, people. So um, make sure you come out, for sure. And this question I asked of Joey, and I'm going to ask of all the guests. Why are, why are party spaces important to our LGBT community and why do we need to come out, support them and keep them alive? I think it's really important to keep LGBT parties and spaces alive, especially in the village, because this is the center for our community and this is where we all congregate to be one with one another. And I think that parties are really important because it lets everybody blow off steam, lets yeah. everybody have a little fun, and it's safe and enjoyable, and everybody, especially at FML Mondays, is welcome and included. Party on. Thank you. You've been lovely. Thank you, All right. Uh, we will take a little break, and we will be right back. Hi everyone, I'm Lorenzo Pagnotta with On The Couch and today I'll be speaking with the presenter of Jockstrap held at the Black Eagle in Toronto's Gay Village. Welcome to the show, Dale. Cool, thank you. So were you born and raised in Toronto? Uh, no, actually I grew up in a town about five hours north of here called Sudbury. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Did you always know you were going to be an event producer? I had no idea actually. It's kind of funny how it stumbled upon me. It was a friend of mine, actually I was dating him at the time and it was his idea to get into it. It was never anywhere on my radar, and as it turns out, he no longer does it, and I'm the one who's kept up with it, so it's kind of funny. Okay. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about Jockstrap. Okay. Um, well, Jockstrap started um, in 2012. We actually launched it at Church on Church, and it's had a few homes since then. We tried it at the Marquis of Granby. Uh, went well there. We also did it at Club 120, and ended up at um, the Eagle, which I think is probably the best place for it. Everything's been going really well there, and uh, have no intentions of going anywhere with it, keeping it there. So you plan on sticking around for oh, a yeah, while? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Awesome. Is it a monthly event? Or? Yeah, yeah, it's monthly. Uh, happens on the first Saturday. First Saturday of every month. All right, yeah. and what kind of crowds can one expect at Jockstrap? It's a pretty mixed crowd, very fun people, everyone non-judgmental, uh, very welcoming. Um, I'd say age range anywhere from mid-20s all the way up to 40s, 50s. It's a pretty good mix of people. A uh, little bit of kinkiness in there. Like I said, there's some people walking around in jocks, some people not. It's uh, it's an optional dress code, so mm -hmm. it's whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, so yeah. so I might have more fun in a jock strap, probably. I'd like to think so. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Gives me something to think about. <laughs> um, how can we learn more about the party? Um, Facebook, I guess, would be the best place to do it. If you swing on over to Facebook and look up just Jock Party TO, or I think if you just even type in Jock Strap Party, it'll come up too. Okay, uh, just a couple quick fire quickies. Let's call them quickies. So a All couple right. quickies to end. Sure. Uh, what is your favorite, who is your favorite DJ? I have a lot of favorite DJs. Um, Patrick M I think is probably one of my favorites currently. He's a tech house DJ and not so much into the gay scene, but um, it's fantastic anyways. You should definitely check him out if you like that kind of music. Okay, um, and a favorite singer? Favorite singer, uh, well, probably you're not gonna believe me, but I like country music a lot, and Dirk Bentley is a fantastic vocalist. I really enjoy his stuff. Okay, yeah. nice surprise. Thank you so much, Dale, for joining us on the couch today. No problem, thanks for having me. We'll be right back. And hello everyone, we are back with another party of the Mojos. Uh, it's back to church and we got Hi. DJ Delicious. Hi. Hello. Hi. Talk to us about the start of Back to Church. So Back to Church started five years ago and um, it started really because I was noticing a lot of uh, the lesbian community, which is what Back to Church started as, a lesbian party, um, weren't going to Church Street anymore. Okay. And, um, you wanted to bring them back to church. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's how it began. And it's been running successfully for five years. Uh, what do you attribute the success of the party to? Um, how does it compare to other parties? I think it's it's got a really fresh vibe. Okay. Uh, we, we keep it fresh every week with different acts and uh, DJs. Okay. Uh, so And it's got a really great 
sexy crowd too. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what kind of beats should we expect to hear there? You don't, you don't it's not only you, so there's different DJs. Exactly, it's okay. different DJs. So what, what be, what, what's, the, what's the vibe? Right, so again, we try and switch it up. So um, there's always a mix of house, hip hop, and everything in between. Beautiful. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and you mentioned performances? Yes. Okay, so, what kind of performances? Yeah, so we have a um, uh, drag king versus drag queen All right. element, which is awesome. Uh, we have um, DJs from Toronto and outside of Toronto. Um, and uh, we also have a few, a few new acts coming. Nice. Uh, so we'll have some like, um, you know, performances, you know, girls gone wild kind of thing. Oh. That'll be great. Look at that. Uh, the crowd. It's, yeah. a, it's a mixed crowd now. Yeah, so it okay. started off as a lesbian yeah. party and then Mojo and I combined forces. Okay, so that up. happened after you started. Exactly. All right. Yeah, and we cool. partnered up and it's been mixed ever since. How often does it happen? Uh, every second Friday of the month. Okay. And uh, on a, yeah, so At church on church. At church on church, yeah. Beautiful. So I asked this question of uh, all the guests of Mojo. Why are party spaces important to our LGBT community and why do we need to support them and keep them alive? What's your answer to that? Oh, it's that, I think it's, it's important to keep, um, you know, now that the, the Toronto is so, so diverse and accepting of the gay community, it's easy to go elsewhere. Okay. But there's something so special about Church Street. And, and about being um, together. And being, as a community. being Beautiful. together, yeah. And I love your accent. <laughs> thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Uh, check it out and all the best. Thank you very much. Yes. We'll be back. Hello everyone, I am back with a different party and a different guest. Uh, this is Arabian Nights LGBTQ and I have Alamode, host and performer. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hey. Uh, so Arabian Nights and it's spelled with a, with a K. Uh, what is this fabulous party all about? Uh, I know it's fabulous because I've been to it and it is fabulous. So tell me. It is. Um, Arabian Nights is a, is a newer party um, uh, in the LGBT community. Um, it's it's uh, centered around uh, the Middle Eastern community and the lovers of the Middle Eastern culture and the lovers of Middle Eastern men and women out there. Um, it's really fun, it's relaxed, it's a safe space for uh, anybody who just wants to come and feel free and dance and kind of interact with uh, Middle Eastern people, people who, who just really enjoy the Middle Eastern culture. When did it start? Um, the first party actually was back in February, February 26th. It's usually the third. It is new. Yeah, it's pretty new. It's yeah. doing well. It is doing very well. I'm really excited about it. Uh, how often does the party happen and where? Um, it happens every two months, uh, the third Friday of every, uh, of every other month. Um, it happens at Club 120. Um, it usually starts around 10, 11 o'clock. Um, it gets pretty busy pretty quickly. So. Oh, I know. It was yeah. packed. Man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who's the DJ? Uh, the DJ is actually, uh, we, we, he's a Middle Eastern DJ. We're really excited. He's really, really fun. Uh, his name is DJ Lawaz. Um, we bring him in. He plays a lot of cool Middle Eastern tunes. Yes, he does. Uh, and what is the crowd? Who's expected in attendance? Um, we, it's actually, uh, it's, it's pretty open, like there is a huge Middle Eastern crowd that comes there. Uh, women, men, gay, straight, bisexual, trans, uh, it's all inclusive. It's just a lot of fun, it's a little comfortable space for you to be there and just have... Get have there early fun. though, by 11.30, it was packed. Oh yeah, it gets really, really busy really fast. Where The Middle Eastern community tends to be really enthusiastic about their culture. Yeah. Uh, and uh, future plans that you can share with us? Uh, there's a lot uh, coming up for the, the Arabian Nights party. Um, we're, uh, we're actually really excited. Um, new news. Right? Yeah, new news. We're actually going to be starting a new party um, uh, uh, like a, every other month uh, interval at the Black Eagle, actually, it's going to be uh, like a Turkish oil wrestling based <laughs> fetish party. I am so looking forward to that. Um, this gown will look really, really great <laughs> drenched in oil. It'll be fantastic. Um, I would encourage everybody to come on down. Um, whether you're into the fetish, whether you're not into the fetish, if you're a lover of Middle Eastern culture, a lover of fun in general, uh, come on down. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so thank you, Alamod. And you. I hope the party continues. I hope it's a great success. And we will be right back, everyone. Hi, Boyd Kodak here. Welcome to On The Couch. Today, I'm interviewing Alfonso King Jr., also known as DJ Relentless. Alfonso, welcome to the show. Tell us a bit about when and how you started DJing. Well, uh, that was really a long time ago. 
I hate to mention the year, but it was 1980. Uh, my uncle moved to Tampa, Florida, where I'm from, uh, and uh, he needed an assistant at a radio station called WMNF 88.5. And uh, he was blind, so he needed someone to pull the records for him. So that's actually kind of how it started. And um, then I ended up going to his gigs with him, and it just kept going. Uh, and I think probably by the time we started traveling, I went to Chicago in 83 and heard mixing on the radio and fell in love with it. So I started saving my money. I bought like some cheap turntables, Radio Shack. Uh, mixer and uh, practiced every day in my bedroom so that's kind of really the long of it of how it started. Terrific and then uh, you came to Toronto and you brought with you a very unique style of mixing and genres can you tell us about that a little? Um, I, well, I moved here at the end of 2009 uh, I got married in 2010 uh, to my husband John and um, uh, my style, I guess, you know, a lot of DJs tend to stick with one type of music, but I think in order to be a good DJ, you need to be really diverse in your taste. So I actually spend a little of everything. Uh, so I always joke that I'm, I'm not the master of, of any one thing, but I do bring a lot to the table. And uh, then Relentless Entertainment, how that came about? Relentless Entertainment came about because of my husband and I, uh, we're both out about being HIV positive and we noticed that there were no HIV positive events. So we decided to put together an event called PAUSE-TO and uh, that ran for almost three years. Uh, and uh, we actually still do the award show that's associated with it, which is coming up on World AIDS Day, December 1st. Uh, but uh, we also moved into producing other events and shows like Faux Girls, uh, we have events that are coming up, some new events. Uh, the last Thursday of each month is night school at the Black Eagle. Uh, and the last Saturday of each month is a new video dance party at Buddies and Bad Times called Sex Tape. Okay, and where can we find that information in writing so we can follow up and make sure we're in the right place at the right I time? I tell everyone to look me up on Facebook. So look up DJ Relentless, look up Relentless Entertainment. You can find all of the information there on Facebook. Thank you so much, Alfonso. You're welcome. And we are back to wrap up with the lovely Joey Viola. Uh, the quick questions, as, yes. as we do to wrap up. Okay. Uh, your favorite music festival? Um, I'm going to go with Pride Toronto. All right. You know, it's not just music, but it's a festival. I'm going to go with Pride Toronto. Yeah. Uh, your favorite LGBTQ-themed movie? Uh, Chu Wong Fu. All right. I love it. It's a good one. Your favorite singer? Rihanna. Your favorite DJ? <laughs> you can't put me on the spot like that. Any I DJ love that it. works for Mojo is my favorite DJ. There you go. That's the simplest question, answer. What is inspiring about our LGBTQ community? Um, to you? The eclectic a mix of everybody. It's just, it's just, that. it's inspiring. Beautiful. And what can we do better as a community? Big question. That's a big question. Yeah. Um, I think because we can always do better. We can be more empathetic for one another. I love that. Cool. Beautiful answer. And Joey, last words to party music and dancing fans out there. Drop the drama, join the party. <laughs> yeah! And uh, we come to a wrap. Thank you, Joey, for being with us. Thank you for And thank me. you, Mojo, for everything that you oh, do. Oh, you're welcome. Right. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the episode. And again, needless to say, there's a lot more parties in our community. So get out there, check them, support your party promoters, support your community, and enjoy yourself on the dance floor. Take care and see you next time.